How's it going guys and welcome to a very hot and sunny Dubai and also the camera comparison between the Apple iPhone 14 Pro and the Apple iPhone 16 Pro. These are two generations apart and I thought this would be a very wise comparison to do because a lot of you guys I believe would be wanting to switch from a 14 Pro to a 16 Pro and would want to see what exactly the differences you guys are going to get when it comes to camera performance. So I'm sitting on this bench recording exactly the same way with both of these smartphones and this is all at 4K 60 FPS video recording. So let me just quickly get up and give you guys a view of where I am. This is pretty much Zabil Park. Uh, it's a park that's very popular in Dubai and I'm gonna do a full 360 so you guys get an understanding of how both of these cameras are able to handle the different perspectives and scenarios going on in the background and also I'm switching between the audio profiles between both of these in post so you guys can be the judge of audio quality as well but this camera comparison aside from this video is going to entail a lot of photos uh, concentrating on the different aspects of the differences between both of these smartphones so hopefully it helps you and then it's gonna follow with some videos from the rear facing cameras followed by finally my conclusion on what you guys should do if you want to upgrade so if you guys find it useful make sure to like and subscribe and let's begin but before that some specifications. So the Apple iPhone 16 Pro brings some big changes in the camera department compared to the iPhone 14 Pro which has a reasonably capable camera of its own although there is a two-year difference between both the smartphones. But are these differences really there in practice? We'll start things off with a fairly simple picture to assess color profiles where there's lots of similarities. With these taken on the 12 megapixel mode cropping in at 6x isn't too impressive, but with the 48 megapixel mode using Apple's Pro RAW, detail is captured on both devices that is significantly better. The huge change on the iPhone 16 Pro this year is the ultra wide lens at a higher resolution, but again, the differences don't show at 12 megapixels. But with Pro RAW, the iPhone 16 Pro takes advantage of the full 48 megapixel resolution, which seems better at face value, but the picture is slightly softer, so a bit of a mixed bag. In this sample, before we crop in, I want to show you guys how much of an impact Pro RAW has on the image overall. So 12 megapixels and now 48 megapixels, but a huge loss in dynamic range. These are the ultra wide samples at 12 megapixels, which are cropped in here. And now the same crop with Pro RAW enabled at 48 megapixels on the 16 Pro compared to 12 megapixels on the 14 Pro. And so far, the differences are pretty small. Here's a picture of me, and before you question my Balenciaga model-like pose, I had to do it because my shirt was drenched due to the hot weather, and the photo that came out didn't really fit the aesthetic I was going for, so this was an improvise. Once again, the flip from the 12 megapixel to the Pro RAW at 48 megapixels is here, and I know you can edit these RAW images to your liking, but I want to keep things consistent and equal across both the smartphones in this comparison, and for that to happen, I need to just maintain Pro RAW across the board. This is the ultra wide version, and now the 48 8 megapixel ultra wide version on the 16 Pro and finally cropping in to check for differences in detail. So far we've only switched between the wide and the ultra wide where the big differences are expected, but what about zoom? This is 1x cropped in to check for detail where the 16 Pro is showing signs of improvement over the 14 Pro. For good measure, these are the 48 megapixel versions of the same image cropped in the same amount. This is now at 2x zoom where detail seems pretty much the same, if not slightly in favor of the iPhone 16 Pro, and this is telephoto, 5x on the 16 Pro and 3x on the 14 Pro. Even at a higher zoom, the 16 Pro's image is better, and that's further proven when you crop in for detail. Lastly, here's a look at maximum zoom, which is 25x on the 16 Pro and 15x on the 14 Pro, but once again, the 16 Pro looks better. Last year, it was a difference in the way the 15 Pro and the 14 Pro captured portraits that made me return the 15 Pro, so naturally, I had to test this scenario. At 1x, I definitely say the 16 Pro is much, much better, but not at 2x, because here I prefer the 14 Pro. Lastly, this is each respective phone's most zoomed portrait, and I'd say both are pretty much on par. What's not on par though is macro images, where the 16 Pro really flexes its muscles, so if that's something you care about, it might be worth considering. Rounding up on the daytime images, we've got selfies, where the 16 Pro's dynamic range and detail is just marginally better than the 14 Pro. 
At the same time, there's a yellow tinge to my face on the 14 Pro, which isn't that obvious on the 16 Pro. Moving to indoors, you probably know the drill by now. So 12 megapixel images when cropped in, and the 48 megapixel images are here, all on the wide, pretty much identical. The ultra wide quality is also the same, and the higher resolution doesn't seem to be doing much. Indoors, I also had a chance to test portraits again, and for some reason, the 14 Pro's colors and levels look better to me, but the edges of the straw were handled better on the 16 Pro. This is the same at 2x, and I honestly don't know what to say here, so I'm gonna leave it to you guys. Let me know which one you think is better down below. Here though, you do see a difference once again in color profile, and I'm swaying towards the 16 Pro, which I feel does a better job with indoor macro shots as well. Lastly, there's indoor selfies, which across the board seem better on the 16 Pro, and that's proven by this marginal detail increase you see here when cropping in. Okay, now the thing you've probably been waiting for, which is nighttime performance. Right off the bat, the 16 Pro's dynamic range is better, looking at how there's some capture of the inside of the store on the left side, which the 14 Pro just loses out. Cropping in, it does show that the 16 Pro retains more detail and handles light exposure better. The same shot with the ultra wide, there's marginal differences but not very telling. And don't even try using the Pro Raw at night, the results are really bad. And this is mind you, with the 48 megapixel sensor on the 16 Pro compared to the 12 megapixel one on the 14 Pro. Another challenging shot is this one, and I took this to see how much better the 16 Pro has become at reflections, and from the looks of it, not much, because both phones reflect the bolt's light like a ghost right above it. This is the same picture cropped in, and this is the Pro Raw version respectively, both 48 megapixels, where the 16 Pro shows a slight upper hand. But quite frankly, these differences aren't selling me just yet. This is one of the darkest places I found around the area, and a simple cycle between the wide and the ultra wide does show some improvement in favor of the 16 Pro, like lower noise and better detail. This is further amplified using the 48 megapixel sensor, so it seems like the iPhone 16 Pro's real leverage comes in intensely dark environments. This kind of a trend is also seen when cycling between the zoom ranges, so another victory for the 16 Pro here. And while this image is certainly better captured on the 16 Pro, the ultra wide counterpart opens up some debate. Likewise, the color profiles of these portrait images and at 2x the fact that the 14 Pro seems to be doing better. Last but not least are nighttime selfies, where there's not much to say, but with portrait mode enabled, the 16 Pro takes the win. From a photo's perspective so far, the 16 Pro's victories are evident, but they're not so large as to warrant a complete upgrade. But what about videos? Full HD video right across both 30 and 60 FPS feels like it's better stabilized with improved dynamic range and details in shadows. Action mode is another area where the 16 Pro does improve with better dynamic range, but stability between both the smartphones is fairly identical if you ask me. The most evident difference comes at 4K video, where at 30 fps the 16 pro's colors are richer and the video detail and stability is better at 60 fps the difference is way more evident and here the 16 pro is far better and also allows a complete cycle of lenses from 0.5x to the maximum 15x without having to stop in between and start recording again while the 14 pro stops at 1.5x and then you have to stop the recording and start once again at 2x onward to a maximum of 9x Lastly, there's 120 FPS support on the 16 Pro, which isn't as drastically different in terms of quality, but still better than the 60 FPS mode on the 14 Pro at double the frame rate. In low light, the differences in video increase further, where if you're primarily a full HD 30 FPS person, you might not notice it, but at 60 FPS, the quality of videos that the iPhone 16 Pro can capture is far better than the 14 Pro. At 4K 30 FPS and above all the way to 60 and 120 FPS, to be honest, the difference just keeps increasing, and the improvement in quality would basically mean that for an iPhone user upgrading from the 14 Pro, you'd now be able to film more confidently at a zoomed range at night without losing much quality, and also have more room to play with with more 
frames being captured. Which means if you're primarily a photos person, the differences in the iPhone 16 Pro and 14 Pro are marginal and not very big. But for video, like you've seen and are going to see in the next clip, the differences are much bigger, more obvious and might warrant an upgrade. So that's a wrap on the Apple iPhone 14 Pro versus iPhone 16 Pro camera comparison. Do let me know what you guys thought about this form of a comparison and make sure to let me know which one you thought did better. As always, thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe for more videos to come. This was Vapov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.